When you see a question like this uh, in a either a uh, maths olympiad or a, or a pre-uni examination you can bet your bottom dollar that there will be a simple um, solution one simple solution which you can then take out as a factor and it will leave you with something else and that's exactly what the case is here so just by inspection we can see uh, that x to the 10 minus x to the 9 add x minus 1 a solution to that will be 1 because 1 to the power of 10 minus 1 to the power of 9 add 1 minus 1 equals 0 and so therefore, uh, we know that we can write x to the 10 minus x to the 9 add x minus 1 as x minus 1 times, and now all we need to do is just compare the coefficients. So uh, here must be x to the 9, because x to the 9 times x to the 1 is going to be x to the 10. Uh, and then we've already got our minus x to the 9 here. Uh, and then all we need to do is plus 1 here, and that will give us plus 1x uh, and minus 1. So basically we know that x to the 10 minus x to the 9 add x minus 1 equals x minus 1 times x to the 9 plus 1. Okay, so now what we need to do is focus on uh, x to the 9 plus 1 because there are nine solutions to that. So we have x to the power 9 plus 1 equals 0, i.e. x to the power 9 equals minus 1. Okay, so we're in the realm of complex numbers now. All right, so let's have a look at um, uh, the, the um, number minus 1 in, uh, in complex numbers. We can write it in polar coordinates as cos of pi plus i sine of pi. If we look at the argon diagram, uh, here is minus 1. And remember that we... Um, that we calculate the arguments from the positive real going around, so that is pi, um, so that is minus 1. Um, but in actual fact, um, there, there, there's another way of writing this, and we're going to need the other way in order to solve uh, x to the 9 equals minus 1. What we could do is we could go round again like that, which is pi plus another 2 pi. So we could also write minus 1 as cos of 3 pi add i sine of 3 pi. And we can also go round another time, like that, and still get to minus 1, which would mean we can also write minus 1 as cos of 5 pi, add i sine of 5 pi, and we can go on forever doing that. So in actual fact, in general terms, we can write minus 1 equals cos of 2k plus 1 pi plus i sine of 2k plus 1 pi, where k is contained in the integers. All right, so now that we've got uh, our general form for uh, minus one here, uh, we can now say, so x to the power of nine equals cos of 2k plus one pi, add i sine 2k plus one pi, and now we can take the ninth root of both sides, which gives us x. So x, uh, and uh, x equals cos of uh, 2k plus one pi add i sine 2k plus 1 pi to the power of a ninth and we can actually write uh, the polar form of cos 2k to 1 pi plus i sine 2k plus 1 pi as e to the i 2k plus 1 pi so again let's put here e to the i 2k plus 1 pi divided by 9 because we're taking the ninth root of it and let's have a look here at e to the, to the, let's just write it slightly, 2k plus 1 pi i over 9. Okay, now let's just have a look at that. So we want to basically um, uh, find the solutions to that between plus pi and minus pi. Okay, so what values of k will we put in in order to get solutions which are between uh, where the argument is between the argument is between pi and minus pi. Well, we will put in k equals minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so let's put those in, and we are going to get the nine solutions to x to the power of 9 plus 1, which is e to the minus, uh, let's put 4, in minus 4 into here first, so 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, minus 8 add 1 is minus 7, e to the minus 7 pi i over 9, 
that is that one. Let's put in minus 3 now, uh, and that will give us e to the minus 5 pi i over 9. And if we put in minus 2 as k, the, remember these values are k, if we put in minus 2, we will get e to the minus 3 pi i over 9. If we put in minus 1, we get e to the minus pi i over 9. Uh, if we put in, so where are we up to now? If we put in 0, k equals 0, we get e to the pi i over 9, put k equals 1, e to the 3 pi i over 9, k equals 2, e to the 5 pi i over 9, uh, k equals 3 is e to the 7 pi i over 9, and finally k equals 4, we get e to the 9 pi i over 9, uh, which in actual fact, uh, just looking at this one, we can get this one out of the way straight away, 9 pi i over 9 is the same as e to the pi i which uh, on an argon diagram is basically here, i.e. minus 1. So e to the pi i is minus 1. So therefore we know that one, another one of the solutions is minus 1. And in fact, if we go back to our original equation here, x to the power of 10, well, minus 1 to the power of 10 is 1. x to minus 1 to the power of 9 is minus 1. So that's 1 plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, which equals 0. So we've confirmed that minus 1 is um, one of the solutions. Now, what's quite interesting is... We have these other nine solutions, just some out of interest, although it's not actually related to the, uh, to the question. If we plot those on the argon diagram, and I'm bound to do this not very accurately, uh, and if this is the unit circle, because the modulus of every single one of them is, is uh, 1, we would have e to the minus 7 pi i over 9 is basically around here, and e to the minus 5 pi i over 9 basically around here and e to the minus 3 pi over 9 is around here and e to the minus pi over 9 is around here e to the pi i over 9 is here e to the 3 pi i over 9 is about here uh, e to the 5 pi over 9 is about here and e to the 7 pi over 9 is about here and then just a matter of interest if we then joined them up we would actually end up with a regular if I'd have drawn it properly a regular Nonagon. That's a little bit of uh, trivia, not exactly related. But anyway, so in order to um, go back to the question, uh, which is solve x to the 10 minus x to the 9, add x minus 1, the 10 solutions, and there are 10 solutions, are, first of all, um, our first solution was x equals 1, and then our other 9 solutions are these 9 solutions. Now, just to confirm, let, let's check that um, you know the, these are actually uh, a solution. So why don't we just pick a, a random solution here. Let's take, for example, uh, I don't know, e to the 5 pi i over 9. And let's just put e to the 5 pi i over 9 into the equation x to the 10 minus x to the 9, add x minus 1. And let's see if it actually is equal to 0. So... Let's put in e to the 5 pi i over 9 to the power of 10 minus e to the 5 pi i over 9 to the power of 9. Add e to the 5 pi i over 9 minus 1. We need to see if that actually does equal 0 and therefore that this is one of the 10 roots of this equation. One of the 10 solutions to the equation. So e to the 5 pi i over 9 to the power of 10 is e to the 50 pi i over 9 and e to the 5 pi i over 9 to the power of 9 is e to the 5 pi i uh, and let's just leave this e to the 5 pi i over 9 minus 1 okay e to the 5 pi i is the same so 5 pi if we look at our argon diagram is basically going 2 pi 4 pi 5 pi so it's the same as e to the pi i, uh, which so that is the same as e to the pi i, which we know is minus 1. So we can rewrite this as e to the 50 pi i over 9, minus minus 1, add e to the 5 pi i over 9, minus 1. That cancels. So all we need to do now is look at these other two terms here and confirm that they add up to zero, and then we have confirmed that uh, e to the 5 pi i over 9 is one of our roots. So e to the 50 pi i over 9, let's have a look at that one. Well, um, 18 pi over 9 is the same as 2 pi, 
So if we look at our argon diagram, that's 18 pi over 9, so that's 36 pi over 9. So therefore, we can rewrite that as e to the 14 pi i over 9. Um, and actually, in fact, we can, we can do another one. We could actually rewrite that again as e to the minus 4 pi i over 9 by taking away another 18 over 9 pi. Um, and let's bring this one down here. Add e to the 5 pi i over 9. Now, in actual fact, if we draw these two here on an argon diagram, you will see that e to the 5 pi i over 9 is this, where that is 5 pi over 9. And e to the minus 4 pi over 9 is down here, where this is 4 pi over 9. And 4 pi over 9 add 5 pi over 9 means that this is a straight line, which actually means that on the Ardon diagram, we can see that e to the minus 4 i over 9 add e to the 5 pi over 9. They're going to cancel each other out and give 0. If you're not convinced about that, then we could actually convert to polar form. So let's convert e to the minus 4 pi i over 9 to polar form, which is... Um, uh, cos of minus 4 pi over 9 add i sine of minus 4 pi over 9. And then if we convert e to the 5 pi i over 9 to polar form as well, we get cos of 5 pi over 9 add i sine 5 pi over 9. OK, now we just need a little bit of a basic trig to prove that that what we want to prove again is that that equals zero, i.e. that e to the 5 pi over, 5 pi over 9 is, is indeed a solution to our, uh, to our question. Um, now, minus 4 pi, uh, we just need these, uh, these two trig identities, cos of pi minus theta equals minus cos of theta, sine of pi minus theta equals sine of theta, cos. Of course, you wouldn't have to do this in an exam. Um, this is just to show you that it, it is actually a root. Uh, and sine of theta equals minus sine of minus theta. OK, so therefore we have that cos of minus 4 over 9 is the same thing as cos of 4 pi over 9. And sine of minus 4 pi over 9 is minus sine of 4 pi over 9. So that's minus i sine 4 pi over 9. And we also know, using uh, this identity here, cos of... Uh, pi minus theta is minus cos of theta, that cos of 4 pi over 9, therefore, is minus cos of 5 pi over 9 minus i sine of 5 pi over 9, which is 180 minus, using that. And therefore, we can see that when we add up this and this, we do indeed get 0. So therefore, even though we've only proved it for one of them, which all the way back up here, we, uh, we just checked that e to the 5 pi i over 9 is indeed a solution. All 9, if we do exactly the same thing, all 9 of these, e to the minus 7 pi i over 9, e to the minus 5 pi over 9, e to the minus 3 pi over 9, minus pi uh, i over 9, e to the pi over 9, e to the 3 pi over 9, e to the 5 pi over 9, e to the 7 pi over 9, and e to the i pi, as well as the number 1, are the 10 solutions to the equation x to the 10 minus x to the 9 add x minus 1 equals 0.